This time on Norfolk Perspectives, we're going to be talking about the Citizens Police Academy and the role you can play. Norfolk State University, the athletes are coming to town and we're going to have a great season starting with uh, their football team. What's new in your rec center? And Harbor Lights Half Marathon is coming in November and they're going to have a 5K. Do I do a half marathon or a 5K? Find out right here on Norfolk Perspectives. Welcome to Norfolk Perspectives. I'm Bob Batcher. And normally when I have two police officers on the, so on the sofa, I get real nervous. But these two guys, we know them well. I, wait a minute. Miles and McDell. Who who's, are, who's McDell? I don't know. You're Jet. And your partner over here? That's Miles. Are you McDell? <laughs> no. <laughs> I but, but the point is, you guys are well known in the community. And not just as police officers, but as people who care. Why do you think that is? Or should I ask... Yvette Brown, who's the president of CPAN, that question. Why is it these guys are so well known? They're and well loved. known because they go the extra mile. You know, when you have a community resource officer that actually knows the residents, the residents know them, they trust them. Mm -hmm. They're also role models to the youth in that area who go to school. They put on wonderful youth academies. And I tell you, the parents and the children just love them to death. And you would say that even if they weren't caring there? <laughs> yes, I would. I mean, I've uh, witnessed some of their youth academies, and the turnout is phenomenal. The parents come that last day when they throw the graduation celebration. It's just a wonderful thing to see how much the children look up to these two fine officers. Okay, I guess we ought to give them equal time now. Yes. What do you have to say about Miles? Do you know this guy? <laughs> I've known him for the past five years, and unfortunately, he is, he is a great guy. <laughs> I guess that's fortunate. Um, yeah, he's been my partner for five years. We work great together. Communication's a little off sometimes, but it happens. But in the end, we always work things out. Okay, so you guys travel together all day long? Pretty much. Pretty we much. go on vacation together, too. Do you really? Yes, yes. we do. <laughs> okay, now, I, w I was at a civic meeting the other night when you guys were speaking, and there, I have to agree with you about it. I could tell that there was a relationship there and a trust level. So what do you guys do to build that trust level? Besides being a lot of fun at a... At a well, you, you need a sense of humor, yeah. first of all, in this job. You cannot do this job without a sense of humor. And we know when to be serious, and we know when to joke. And it has to be a balance. Even though he and I are like oil and, 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 and water, but, um, you know, we complement each other. We, we are the complete opposite. I'm young and vibrant, and he's old. <laughs> he's just an old, decrepit guy, right? <laughs> decrepit. Okay. I got to say, two years in a row, you guys won the Crime Prevention Award. Correct. What would that mean to you? I'm very proud of, of that award. It's very rarely that that has happened, and, you know, that just shows that our dedication is pretty much recognized by just not the citizens, but the members of the board as well, and we greatly appreciate it. And the people that actually nominate us. Now, I, I will say that in the next couple of weeks, we'll be announcing the season begins with nominations, just for food for thought for you guys. Yvette, the Citizens Police Academy. Yes. You've been the president of the, of the alumni group. Yes. But before you become an alumni, tell me, what is this, the Police Academy? The Citizens Police Academy class you have to go through, which is 13 weeks, and upon graduation, you have to complete at least half of those classes in order to graduate. And these two officers always offer refresher courses for those who miss a few classes. Um, once you graduate, you can then join the alumni. And we're happy to have them when they do. Um, because our function is to support the police department. And we do that in a number of ways. Uh, the scholarships to active duty police officers, children mm -hmm. who are furthering their education. We support their youth academies. We serve at just about all the police functions like the police recruit graduations, police memorial, and the um, annual awards that the police department gives them. So I tell you, they have been doing this for a number of years, the Citizens Police Academy class. And I can tell you that the students that go through those classes, they adore them. I remember being at one graduation, and of course, CPAN gives a graduation gift to all the graduates. And they turned the, the, 
the class turned around and was giving them gifts. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how much cool. they enjoy spending that time with them. Which, of so, course, we turned down. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's because it was a gift card for Krispy Kreme. But, uh, <laughs> oh, there was, you, and you guys would never even think Absolutely about going to Krispy Donuts? No. Okay, so I made a comment on the show a few weeks ago talking to the gal that's doing the recruitment that I, what I know about the police department I learned on TV. And I thought she was going to fall off the sofa when I said that because if I, that's one of the advantages of going to the academy. You go much deeper than watching it on TV. What kinds of things do you guys teach at the academy? Would you like to start? Yes, I'll start. <clears throat> well, first of all... So polite. <laughs> uh, you should see us in the car. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like it is on TV. I mean, people get the wrong impression of the police department from watching television and watching all those CSI shows. When they come to the Citizens Police Academy, they get taught what the real CSIs do in our department. Uh, we, they learn about homicide, they learn about gangs, uh, they learn about drugs. We do demonstrations with the drug dog, the uh, canine dog. We, we actually added the airport, so we take them to the airport. We go on a couple of field trips, do behind the scenes look at the airport. We go to the jail and do a jail tour, and people are amazed at what the actual police department does as, the po as opposed to what the notion that people actually think what we do. Well, we were actively involved in recruiting people for the academy, so uh, besides being a whole lot of fun, I know Know that I've talked with people who have come back and said, gee, I didn't know that. And so that really is uh, getting to, to know what's going on in your community. And what better way to become engaged? Exactly. But to, uh, to get to, exactly. to know. Exactly. I want to thank you guys personally. Very uh, welcome, sir. For everything that you've done to serve the residents of the, of the city and really bringing that partners together. And you bet, what, what more can I say about you? Six <laughs> years as president. Keep, we, we're going to vote for you for another six years. <laughs> so, I don't know about that. Th thanks a lot. When we come back, we're going to be talking about getting maybe some numbers on Norfolk State. What do you think? Stay tuned. Every day, kids witness bullying. Oh, look! Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> Poor you. They want to help, but don't know how. See, no one here is going to help you. because no one. Teach your you. kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. Hey, you know, I've got somebody on the sofa, uh, Marty Miller, who is one of my... I idolized the guy. He came out of baseball. He's now an athletic director at Norfolk State. And you're waiting for some emails already, aren't you, for the football season? Uh, how's it going? Everything's going well, and I appreciate the opportunity to be on your show again. I know. Well, and I'm glad you said again, because the, the last time I, I failed in my mission, my okay. mission was to get you to predict mm -hmm. and how the season's going to go. You mm -hmm. gonna... Well, let me tell you this way. We plan to be at every game. Okay. We plan to play. Okay. And we plan to come out victorious in these games. Okay. That's the best I can give you right now. Well, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live with that because I really want you to talk to me. And if I try to come on too strong <laughs> with that, you won't talk to me. But I want, what is it like to be an athletic director? Well, most people would never realize how difficult this assignment is. Uh, it's something every day that we have to deal with from either the student athletes, the fans, the NC2A, your conference. Uh, it's a lot involved each and every day, and there's a lot more detail than people would ever imagine. Because I guess uh, when you watch it on TV, mm -hmm. it's the coach that's running up and down. Yes. It's the coach that seems to be taking all the heat, sometimes through the athletic director. Yes. But the whole college sports scene has changed over the years, hasn't it? It, it has. Uh, the landscape for college athletics has definitely changed, and it's continued to change. If you've been keeping up with current events, you can see what has happened with the NC2A, mm -hmm. the new policies that are being passed, the new mandates that we have to adhere to. So it's making it very, very difficult to administer uh, college teams now. But it's a big business, as you can see, a lot of money involved. Mm -hmm. But it's, it creates a great environment for the student athletes and the fans. Okay, now, I'm, I, I, I'm not going to how do I ask this? Okay, when you were in college, when you were playing in college, mm -hmm. what were the name of the game there? Was it all about the money or was it about the sport? It, it was different then. You know, you would hear individuals like myself would always say, uh, I would play for the love of the game. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I've heard guys like Willie Mays say the same thing. But you don't hear that anymore. It's, it's about the money. Uh, the, the amount of money that's made now by these athletes, um, it's, it's, it's a lot. And, but most of those guys love the money. And I'm not saying some of them don't love playing the game. Mm -hmm. But money plays a very important part in the decisions that they make. Okay, tell me, the t tell me how's, how's the track for a student that goes to Norfolk State and comes to watch games and then isn't an athlete versus the athlete at Norfolk State? Because they do have to sacrifice. They, it is not easy. Well, being a student athlete, you, you, you pay a price. Uh, you have to manage your time well. You have to pass your classes. You have to practice. You travel a lot. So it's, it's a great demand on, on your time, and you must be able to manage it well if you're going to be successful on and off the field. With the NC2A rules governing academic performances as well as your athletic performances, mm -hmm. Uh, you have to meet those requirements. If you don't, the student athlete can't compete. And now the athletic programs uh, get placed on probation or suspension, a number of issues that's related to that. I was uh, talking to a guy that works on trying to get kids scholarships in that, into uh -huh. colleges. And we were talking about that. He refers to it as a three legged stool. You got the kid <laughs> that can play the sports, yeah, then you got to have the academics, and then you got to have the character. Right. Because the last thing you want to do, as he says, is be on the ticker. That's true. Is that, how is that going in this era of, of, of college? Uh... Well, it's, it's a lot of pressure because no athletic program wants to be on the front page or on television based on something the student athletes did. Uh, believe it or not, the first thing that I do every morning is to read the sports page because I don't want to see something that happened that I didn't know about. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I can be prepared for the day. If it's on the field, you ought to know about it. I ought to know about it. But it, it creates a lot of pressure uh, as the director of athletics because you want to make sure your students uh, are good citizens. And this is something that we emphasize each and every year. And we actually work hard to try to make sure that they maintain that type of behavior. Okay, we only got about a minute left. I'm going to ask you to, to, uh, to talk to that parent of a high schooler kind of on that theme, who, who's a good football player, good baseball player, good basketball player, what kind of advice would you give them? Well, first of all, I tell them that they have to be committed to doing well both academically as well as athletically. And they also must be good citizens because what you do, it, it reflects the entire university, it affects your family, and not only yourself. So they have to understand that there's a lot involved when you become a student athlete. And, and we pay a lot of attention to making sure that we try to get them to perform well uh, on all those fronts. Well, I know I, uh, we've got a coworker whose son is moving in as a ba ba baseball <laughs> player, and he's saying he was embraced right. as being a family member. Okay, this question's for uh, those <laughs> alumni out there. Okay. What do you have to say to the Norfolk State alumni about this football season? Well, we are very excited. In fact, Coach Adrian said that this is probably the best team he had since he's been here. So he's put himself out there. He's indicated this to all the fans. And being the athletic director, you know, I'm following, I'm getting that feeling that maybe he may be right this year, that he wants to go all the way. We think the team will do well. And we're looking forward to having a great year. In fact, our non-conference schedule this year is the toughest we've had. Yeah. Since I've been here, we, we start out at University of Maine. We come back and play Liberty at home. Then we have William and Mary at their place, and then we go to the University of Buffalo. So it's a tough non-conference schedule, but the student athletes are there ready. Okay, so you just hung it on the athletes and the coach. I like yeah. that. Well, that's where that's where the pressure is. Can they play in the snow? <laughs> that last game. Uh, well, we we are playing them when there's no snow predicted. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Marty. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. And I tell you what, now I know why the Norfolk State team does have the character and the record that it does have. So I'm going to wish you, well, can I wish you good luck? I hope so. Because I know in the, in the arts world we say break a leg, but I don't want that. No, happen. no, we don't need any breaks. Okay, No good. breaks. Okay, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to having you come on after the season and tell me how it went. Thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity of being here again. Okay, great. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about some new stuff going on in the rec centers because that helps prepare those athletes you look for. Stay tuned.
This is the moment I knew his future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. Okay, before we get into talking about rec centers, we got to go down memory lane a little bit about our last guest, Marty Miller. And Demise Williams, you, you, you've known Marty for a long time, haven't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting Coach Miller in 2005 when I transferred up to play uh, collegiate baseball under him at Norfolk State. And did he really swing closing his eyes? Nah, he's too good of a hitter. He, he, he's, he's a real good hitter. But, but he's really humble. Yes. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Uh, a man with uh, as many accolades as Coach Miller has and just the way he comes off as, you know, a very humble person, that's him every day. That's not a show. It's not for the cameras. That's just how he is. Yeah, so for that alumni that's going to email him or call him on Monday after a football game, keep that in mind. Right? Gotcha. <laughs> okay. And Darren Everett, how you doing? Good. How are you? Okay, you're the uh, facility manager where Demise is the recreation supervisor, right? Right, correct. So you guys have been together for a while? Yeah, for a long time. We've been together about four and a half years or so. Through our different promotions and stuff that we've had, we've always seemed to kind of be joined at the hip and they kind of... <laughs> Keep us together, I guess. No, you know, feel free. We were on the sofa, so how's that been going for you? No. <laughs> okay, I understand it's your job to correct me because I said in the tease that this is, you know, we're going to be talking about what's new in the rec centers and preparing kids to go to Norfolk State to be an athlete. But that's not what it's all about, is it? No. I mean, we have different, of course, we do have athletics programs, but we also have different programs um, arts, music, you know, even theater you know, all kinds of different things that we can do. And it's not just for kids. A lot of times people think that mm -hmm. the rec centers are just for children. Um, we have all ages. So from five years old to 105 years old, we have senior programs, adult programs. You, want, you can go there and get fit. You can take Zumba classes, um, you know, arts and crafts classes. And the seniors, we have a lot of fun with the seniors. They do a lot of field trips and, and pottery classes and stuff like that. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> think I'm ready for a field trip, huh? Yeah, yeah. No, well... <laughs> Because, I mean, the Zumba and, of course, I, I belong to the fitness center, okay. which is also mm -hmm. part, of the, part of the system. It's mm -hmm. a little different fee base, but mm -hmm. it really is about bringing health back, but also building relationships, mm -hmm. right? What do you guys find rewarding as being a staff member there? Um, I think when it comes to uh, the rewarding thing about this career field is being able to connect with a community and establish those relationships that last generations to generations. We have uh, people who've been working in the rec centers for a long time who are now have relationships with the kids of the people that they used to serve when they were kids. Yeah. So yeah. it's so rewarding to, to have that uh, effect on the community to make them want to do um, some positive in their life. I remember I had one gal on with the aquatic program who years ago handed out towels. Mm -hmm. okay. That was her job. And now mm -hmm. she's, you know, supervisor. So that kind of relationship is, uh, is really cool. What about what? What is the average kid coming in? Well, what are you seeing as being able to touch with the average kid coming in? Let's focus on the kids, uh, because we hear that there's a lot of you know, there's a concern out there mm -hmm. about our kids. But what role can the rec center play? Well, what we do is like right now we have a real big teen initiative, because you know we're trying to find things for teens to do. Because a mm -hmm. lot of times they they feel like they don't have anything to do. Um, traditionally, they would they felt like the rec center that some of the programs were kind of young for what they wanted to do. So now we have some teen initiatives. We have a um, Money Matters program where we're going to teach them how to like balance checkbooks, save, invest for college, retirement even, so they can think to the future. Um, you know, different things like that. We also have a... Um, a you're, wait a minute, you're going to talk to a teen about retirement? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, never too somebody early to talk start. to me about that. Right, me too. Ago. I do too. <laughs> it's never too early to start. So, you know, we have things for them to do. And, um, you know, so they don't just feel like they're being left out. Because that's a, a, something that we really want to focus on now as a team population. So strengthen more than just the thumb. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Now, are the thumb activity allowed in the rec centers? Um, no. Not, not, not. We have some um, like type of video games, type of uh, activities for the kids in the rec center, but uh, we tend to use those as rewards type. It's not the focal point. We usually want to make uh, have them doing activities uh, where they can have some type of a uh, cooperative experience with their peers teamwork and uh, things in that nation. And um, as Darren alluded to, uh, with the teen initiatives, one of our bigger uh, teen programs that we do is the uh, Norfolk Emerging Leaders Program. Mm -hmm. Pretty much it's a uh, program to give the teens of Norfolk uh, employee, employee ready. Um, and different things 
that we cover in that program is leadership skills, um, resume writing, um, interview techniques, things that have helped them along in the future, whatever their career path may be. And boy, we're coming off to class this summer, and it seems like every summer these kids have gotten brighter and brighter uh, with every year. So congratulations Thank on you. that. Thank you. It's, that's it's definitely awesome. because of rec centers. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I know. It. I mean, that's that's where it's all born, right? Mm -hmm. That's and right. Let's talk about our rec centers because we a lot of people say we have too many rec centers. We got uh, we don't have enough, enough rec centers. The model for our rec centers really is a neighborhood base. Yes, that's right. We have um, all of our rec centers are within 4.5 miles of each other. And um, we also, we have three tiers of rec centers. We have tier one, which is our smaller sites with our like 1,100 to 6,500 6, square feet. Tier two, um, 7,000 and over. And then we have tier three, which is the two centers that we have, Norview and Lambert's Point, which are our bigger centers that have like, Lambert's Point has a rock climbing wall, Norview mm -hmm. has it, the uh, technology center and stuff like that. Now, you know, we've had this whole conversation and you guys never once have mentioned which one you're at. <laughs> so in closing, uh -huh. where can we find you? I'm at Lambert Sport Community. Or the Rock Ball, or the, the great, great workout room. One of the best. Exactly. Yeah. And um, you can find me, I'm at the Park Place Community Center. Which is one where the kids come in and they need you. Yes, sir. It's cool. It's a cool center. I want to thank you guys uh, personally for everything that you've done to really, really touch base with that community in young and old. <laughs> and I love to hear, go to good times and find out about the field trips. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. When we come back, we're gonna talk about a field trip that's gonna go all the way around the city come November called a half marathon. Stay tuned. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. We are running in November, and you got to join us. Welcome to back to Norfolk Perspectives. I got Brittany Vada here. How you doing? Good. Communications How are you? director for JNA Racing. Uh, Bob Schneidwin. Schneidwin. Schneidwin, community uh, relations director for uh, JNA Racing, and Stephanie Myers, sponsor director. Oh, so you have to go out there and get all the money. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. We do, yeah. So we have some awesome sponsors for this race, but I'm going to let you talk about the race a little bit. Yeah, well, first of all, I want to talk about Jane A. Because <laughs> okay, this is, yes. okay, I got to tell you, I, I see a lot of ads on uh, another TV station. Mm -hmm. uh, you usually have races in another city in our region yes. mm -hmm. around holiday times. Mm -hmm. Like, I think there's one around Labor Day something. No, or, that's, not yeah. that's not us. That's <laughs> not you. No, so no. what are some of the races you all do then? Well, we do. Our biggest one is the Shamrock Marathon weekend in March. Okay, that's the March. On St. Patrick's Day. And we do another oceanfront race, the Wicked 10K, which is a big Halloween party. It's awesome. We do a race over in Hampton, and we do two races now in Norfolk. The ODU 5K, which is brand new this spring, and the one we're very excited about coming up here in November. Harbor Lake. Okay. Now, when you guys talk about doing races, what, because it's not a matter of just showing up at 7 o'clock in the morning no. and starting to run. Not There's at all. a lot that goes into it. There's right? months of preparation, especially for a new event. We've been working with Norfolk for years trying to do something like this because we've really wanted to come down and show off the city and we're excited about the course. So it really it is it's a years and then months long process for getting sponsors and getting volunteers and getting permits and setting up courses and barricades and all those things that take a long time. Okay, to so get ready. how far is 5K? 3.1. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had to think about that one. 3.1 yeah. miles. Mm -hmm. Okay, how far is a half marathon? 13.1. Okay, mm -hmm. so how do you know? I mean, somebody's got to run it ahead of time? Is that how oh, it works? Yes. How do you figure yeah. out the course? <laughs> well, it, these days it's a little easier because we have the technology of Google Maps and Map My Run, and you can kind of get a feel for it. But we have one of the guys on our staff, Chris, is certified to actually go out with his measuring devices. And so you just tell him to go out close. and run? Well, no, no, he doesn't run. He uses wheel devices and bicycles, and, and he'll get the rough on paper, and then he'll, okay, I'm point two short, so I need to add something here. So it's it's Hence it's that done. turn left when you should have turned right. At, at a <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully that won't happen. Right. <laughs> because, uh, because, again, to make these legitimate races, they've, they've got to be 
certified. Checked and whatever certified. Right. Okay. The course has to be certified. Right. So uh, it's this just months and months of planning and logistics and working together. So. And you're getting the community involved in that too, aren't you? We are. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. In fact, we uh, we love getting the community involved. And we've already notified all the civic leagues and all the churches that are affected by the course, not only because we want them to be aware that this is happening in their backyard, but we would love them to be out there. We would love them to be our water stop people and our course marshals and our cheer stations because if you're in your own neighborhood cheering people on, you're, you have a little more um, ownership of that mm -hmm. particular event and you're excited about showing off where people are coming through and you get, uh, we just would love to have that happen. Because I can speak, I, I have participated, walk Ron, in, in a few now that have been part of this fitness program. And I gotta tell you, it, it can get lonely out there oh, yeah. <laughs> when you're in the back. Right. Yeah. So I'm gonna plead with the residents to hang in there even for the guys in the back. <laughs> We well, really our appreciate yeah, it. our Please spectators do. are awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've we've never had a problem with lots of people coming out and cheering you on, and um, I think it's going to be great. So. Okay, now I think this course is unique, isn't it? It is. There have been some other half marathons in Norfolk. This is a brand new course. Cert certain sections of the course, you have to go on certain roads in certain places, but we've got a pretty neat course, I think. Well, I, we know people are going to love it. Okay, sponsors? Yes, well, so <laughs> that kind of leads us into this, but it all ends in Town Point Park. So each day on Saturday for the 5K, um, you finish right in Town Point Park and on Sunday for the half marathon. And at that point, um, all the runners will have um, an opportunity to partake in Blue Moon Beer because they are our title sponsor for the event. Um, we'll have a live band out there. It's Right On. Right On Band. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right On Band. World's Greatest playing. Show Band is what they go by. Yeah, so. yeah. We'll have food and um, all sorts of stuff going on, but we have awesome partners for this event. We've got years of experience with working with our sponsors, so Bon Secours Emotion is our presenting sponsor. sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, just the City of Norfolk and Downtown Norfolk Council and um, MacArthur Center, we have, we have a lot of great partners. There's a little subtlety when you mention Downtown Norfolk Council as a sponsor because they're kind of busy that weekend. They're a little busy, yes. Because yeah. so right grand, after the 5K, yes. what happens downtown? The Grand Illumination Parade is Saturday night, and that kicks off their six weeks um, holidays, holidays, in holidays in the city. city. Yeah. Yes. And so, and then package pickup is at Half Moon, and there's going to be an English village in there. Yes, yes, downstairs. So, so there's going to be a lot going on. A lot. Going on. So sign up now. Sign up now. Because you're wide open, ready, ready for runners. Absolutely, we sure are. And that's at harborlightspath.com. So. Hence yeah. mm -hmm. the shirts. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Thanks a lot Thank for uh, finally discovering Norfolk and having it all connect up. Well, we're, we're looking forward to a long here. relationship. Yes, okay. definitely. So we want to hear from you what you'd like to see on TV48, but more importantly, what's going on in your neighborhood besides the race. Give us a holler at 664-6510. And as usual, it's a wonderful time to be in Norfolk just because of you and you, you and you. Thank you.